Hey everyone, welcome back to Peak Human. I'm Brian Sanders, welcome back. We took a little break there for the holiday season and January and some of February. I hope everyone had a great time. I was busy with a lot of things. I'm doing a live intro. If anyone wants to watch this on YouTube, I suggest it. Although this whole episode will not be on YouTube because I got a strike, I got censored for a COVID talk. So now I have to post it on other platforms. I'll be posting this on peakhuman.com peak-human.com. You can find it on Rumble as well, but I only can put up the first 12 minutes of this episode before we start get into getting into the science about the research and all the studies that have been done. And Chris Masterjohn has gone through those studies and then a lot of great analysis. So yes, that's my guest today, Chris Masterjohn, PhD. He has a PhD in nutritional sciences. He was an assistant professor of health and nutrition sciences at Brooklyn College. He's done a lot of great research, a lot of great work on nutrients, nutrition, Weston Price stuff, everything to do with health. He's also involved in some activism, has been speaking his mind about the latest stuff that I won't mention. I really like what he's doing and he's putting out some good content on how to take health into your own hands. So I hope everyone enjoys this episode. You can catch the first 12 minutes on YouTube. You can catch it all on any podcast app unless it gets removed from Spotify and find the rest at peak-human.com. I wanna let everyone know about Nose to Tail. This is my company. This is my only sponsor to the podcast. This is how everything is made possible. This is how we support local ranchers, five families in Texas that raise all the meat and get it out to you. They use regenerative practices. They use holistic management. They pasture raise the pigs and the chickens. They feed them a low poof of diet no corn, no soy, organic. All the beef, bison, and lamb is all pasture raised solely. We call it wild crafted because it's fed a diverse diet on rangeland. It's not a monocrop grass diet. It has all the diverse forages that make their meat healthy and have all the secondary compounds that Dr. Stefan von Vliet has studied. You can go back to that episode. So get your meat today delivered to you. Make a custom box. We ship to 48 states. We have the primal ground beef with the organs mixed in. We have bone broth, we have liver, we have all kinds of cuts, we have sausages. Check it all out at nosetail.org. We also have our other products like the biltong, the drovors. Livervores will be back in stock soon. That's the drovors with liver, which is a dried meat stick with no sugar, no curing agents, just meat and a few spices and some vinegar. We also have the body care stuff, which sells out immediately. We put in a small batch and I think it might be sold out by the time you're hearing this, but you can probably get a few things if you go now, nosetail.org, all made from regenerative beef tallow, handmade, great stuff. And then the seasonings and hats, you know, why not? So check that out, nosetail.org. That's how this show is possible. That's how you can support the show. If you don't wanna buy the meat, find your own local rancher and do that, absolutely. You can support me on Patreon. The Patreon's still open, patreon.com slash peakhuman. You can join the Sapien tribe. We do Zoom calls. We do all kinds of stuff there, a private community. You can go to sapien.org, check that out. You can also share this with family and friends. Go back, start at episode one, and you can also give this a review on iTunes or any podcast app. So without further ado, let's hear from Chris Masterjohn, PhD. Hey, hey, we got Chris Masterjohn here. How's it going? Going great. Thank you for having me. Awesome, man. Uh, we did a podcast a couple of years ago. We ran, in, ran into each other at the Weston Price Wise Traditions Conference a couple months ago. So that was cool. And now we're back for round two and it's going to be different. I encourage people to go back and listen to the first one, but this one might be more controversial, we'll say. Uh, <laughs> I love talking about these controversial topics, although it's getting old. I mean, we're two years into this thing. <laughs> but I think uh, I think it's necessary, and and Chris yeah. is doing great things. You know, he's out there, you know, going to protests, speaking up. Going to get kicked offline soon, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, thanks for doing what you're doing, and yeah, I don't know. Maybe you can introduce yourself a little more to people who might not be familiar with you. Sure, I have a PhD in nutritional sciences. I uh, was a, I was a assistant professor of health and nutrition sciences at Brooklyn college in Brooklyn, New York. And in 2017, I flipped to doing independent scientific analysis. Um, I'm into traditional foods. I'm into the science of vitamins and minerals. And since this, uh, COVID thing, I've been working quite immersed in the research on how to protect ourselves from that. And then as you noted um 
with the with the mandates and stuff like that, I've I've gone uh, kind of into the activist camp to try to preserve human freedom. I love it. I think my crowd's all about that. I haven't had a mass exodus. I think you had a more mass exodus when you started speaking up. But most of my crowd seems to understand that you need to take health into your own hands and that, you know, we don't need mandates. We don't need the government stepping in on this stuff. Yeah, I think I think a lot of my audience growth came in the last couple of years when I was doing very basic new um education on vitamins and minerals and i think a lot of the people that followed me from way back were with me circa 2008 2009 when there was another round of public health authoritarianism that was targeting raw milk especially but raw food and especially private food in general um and so david gumpert had written a book called food um Life, liber- life, liberty, and the pursuit of food rights. About this, uh, but back in those days, they, you know, and they were actually they were trying to get a, um, they they were doing a lot of the, they wanted to do a lot of the stuff with swine flu that they're doing now, but they just didn't have the technology and 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 public will for it, and it kind of went nowhere. But they were also trying to RFID chip every single farm animal in the country. The farmers fought back on that. Uh, but in particular, Ogenus Planets had pioneered a cow sharing program where in states that ban the sale of raw milk, all of which allow someone to consume the milk of their own cow, people could buy shares in a cow and, and then get the milk distributed. And they weren't, no one was being sold the milk. They were drinking the milk of their own cow. And this succeeded in the courts in many states, and then it um, and then it was used for private food in general. So he had set up a food co-op called Rossum in California, and that the whole premise there was we are the co- collective owners of this food, and so we determine how it's produced rather than the, the government. And the government didn't like this, and this was also at the time early in the Obama administration where they were where they were militarizing all the federal bureaucracies. And libertarians were particularly paying attention to this as government waste. And I don't remember which bureaucracies got which weapons, but it was it was but the level of absurdity was like, why does the post office need tanks? And so, you know, the, just like federal bureaucracies that you that would have no obvious need for weapons at all were getting heavy duty military weapons. Um and and that you know that back then I forget what year it was, maybe 2008 or 2009. Rossum got raided twice, and if you do a Google Images search for the for the Rossum, um, if you just search like Rossum guns drawn or something like that, you'll see images of the cops raiding with their guns pointed at people like they're going to shoot them, and they confiscated hundreds of thousands of dollars of food and destroyed them. And Gumpert's book has all kinds of crazy stories like. This one, I, f- I forget the details, so I'm kind of like I'm kind of making a collage of a few different stories, probably. But it was something like, um, you know, a woman was involved in a local, in a local private food co-op making jelly for it, and her, you know, and the public health service troops, I call them troops. They weren't troops prior to the militarization of all these federal bureaucracies, but they show up in combat boots and camouflage military fatigues with machine guns and they lock down the house and they it's like oh it's like a family and so they all the, the parents and the kids have to go like shelter in this room while they collect all the computers so that they could get all their emails from it and stuff like that and um you know so at that at that time I was you know I was everyone who was following me at that time knew that I stand for human freedom above all else and that and that you couldn't be healthy if you didn't stand for that, you know, like, like that was around the time that Joel Salatin had written his book. He's a pasture-based farmer from Virginia. He had written a book called "Everything I Want to Do Is Illegal," based on how the regulatory laws were basically preventing a chicken from living the life a chicken should. And he wanted to raise his chickens as chickens, but the regulatory 
framework was basically all geared towards factory farms. And so you you just it was illegal to be like the pasture farmer that he wanted to be. Um, and so our whole movement was very conscious that to eat good food meant to stand against the government because the government was trying to make you eat fake food. And now that's been taken to the extreme. So I think that had, you know, pre COVID that had, that, that had kind of died down a, a little bit <laughs> and now it's back with a vengeance. And so I wasn't talking about it for a few years when I was studying like marketing and business growth. So I got these, you know, tens of thousands of followers who knew that I was real good with vitamin and mineral science, but really had no idea that when when our right to eat healthy food come or be or live a healthy life or you know control what gets injected into our bodies is under attack. I'm I'm standing with the right to control our bodies. <laughs> so I think that's wow. why I had a ma- mass exodus. But yeah, well, it makes sense. It makes sense. And who knew who knew these those people anyway? So I, yeah, I don't care about losing followers. That that yeah. That I don't need. Yeah, I mean, I so, would, I would, pr- I would prefer to to save as many people as I can, but I'm not, I'm not here to gain followers. I'm, you know, I'm here to speak the truth. So, yeah, well, yeah, we're here to put out content to yeah help the most amount of people, and I like that. Oh, for one, Joel Salton has been on the show, and he's in my film. Um, I'm my goal is to make the film to help the most amount of people and get the food lies out in the open, and I love the part. We're just talking about the government just wants to give you fake food and we're out here trying to get give you real food. Uh, you're all about that. You've been kind of involved with the Western Price stuff for a long time. And I, I try to bring it up on every episode. So there it is again. Uh, I, it, Good job. It's amazing <laughs> stuff. Traditional food. That's what it's all about. And I figured out what my film is about. I, I'm kind of glad it took so long. If people know it's been four years, you know, well, the stupid game changers film with million dollar funding from James Cameron took five years. So I'm still ahead of that, <laughs> but uh, <Doing> good. <laughs> it, it's taken a long time because, and it's morphed and it's, it's a good thing. And there was COVID and there I went to Africa and there's all these things going on, but it helped me like kind of refine my message. And I think before it was a little just, you know, in a certain camp and now I'm on camp, no camp. Right. It's like like and and that's where you're at. Right. You're like, hey, let's look at nutrition, traditional foods, vitamins, minerals. We don't have to be dogmatic about anything, but it's kind of goes back to the we want to eat real food. All the big corporations and governments are pushing fake food. And that's what I'm saying is the the essence of the film. Now, it's it's kind of just like, hey, let's eat real food and and skip the fake food. And meat is good. And that's and that's about it. And we have to make it entertaining and tell it in you know a hundred different ways and go back through evolution and and show how how we got here and we have to go through so many things but that's really all it's about is that do you agree with like what's your like overall nutrition philosophy? So I think traditionally I would have put myself in camp no camp and that you know my like my tribe is the tribeless but I, I think I think now we're just we're under so much threat that I think it's it's time to sort of get a very big tribe that all stands for the right to eat what we want. So there's I'm not now I'm in camp like I'll um you know some some nights end with me hugging a vegan who eats very differently than I would, but if we're if we're both we're if we're both in the camp for controlling what goes in our in our own bodies, I'm making some kind of alliance. But yeah, on the nutrition, um, no, I agree with you. I, I think as a as I think eating real food and eating like our ancestors is a good baseline. I think there's a lot of variation that is between humans and within a human over time, and we need more than that. Uh, but that's but that's a good baseline, and then I I think that we need to know a little bit about nutrition that can allow us to say, Hey, I, you know, I'm doing everything right, but I still have this health problem. What can I do to figure it out? Um, and so I'm, yeah, I'm very much about starting in that place of just eat real food, eat like our ancestors, and then, you know, apply some more sophisticated knowledge when it's needed. Yeah. And for a lot of people, yeah, it it does. It, you got to get into the weeds to figure out these problems. So We'll leave it at that for now. I actually wanted to start more with the COVID stuff. We kind of, I got into this nutrition sure. rabbit hole, which 
you know, it's mostly what I talk about, <laughs> but I've been taking a break from COVID stuff other than with Dr. Gary, uh, which we, we, you know, we've done some episodes on that, but I want to talk about, well, some of your recent posts and podcasts about the PCR negative COVID like illness. So if you could get into that, because I don't know, not many people are talking about, it. I haven't heard many other people talk about it other than you. And so you're, you, like you said, you so spend let- a lot of time getting into the science here. So let's actually back up and start with what we knew in December 2020. All right. So that's it for this preview. You're going to have to go to peak-human.com to catch the rest of this episode. I uploaded on Rumble, but you can watch it from the site peak-human.com and you'll see the most recent post is from Chris Master John and you can watch the rest of the video there. Sorry, YouTube has put me in YouTube jail. I can't post anything else or I'm going to get kicked off the platform. So I can't put any controversial talk, which uh, they have deemed harmful. So check it out there. Thanks, guys.